Let's talk Legion errors in cultists, mighty demon engines, and twisted possessed, with a discussion of every single unit in Codex Chaos Space Marines. Hello and welcome back to War Specs Tactics, where today we're talking chaos and continuing our strengths and weaknesses series. This time I thought we'd focus on the forces of the Dark Gods and talk through Codex Chaos Space Marines with a look at each unit, the pros and cons of using them, and a rough score out of 10 for how strong I'd rate them at the moment. We'll go through each section of the Codex in turn, and also talk about a few extra data sheets like the Traitor Guardsmen as we go along, and run over perhaps a few of the more notable Forge World things at the end. Loads to talk about, so let's jump straight into it and start out with the troops. So first and foremost for the troops we have the Chaos Legionaries, 18 points per model, and the standard issue Chaos Space Marines manning the battle lines for the Dark Gods. Legionaries were certainly massively improved going into the new codex, getting a lot of nice boosts. They are objective secured troops with core, and they're at least reasonably tough with two wounds and armor of contempt, both of which are pretty nice things for holding down points and seeing off all comers. If you want to build them out into a bit more of a damage dealing unit, you could potentially take chain swords plus the mark of corn for a bucket load of strength 5 AP-2 attacks. You can equip them for range a little bit as well, plus you have the option for the Balefire Tome in the unit, that's quite nice to make them a mini psyker, allow them to deny a power plus cast something like smite, prescience or delightful agonies maybe. Being able to take both marks and icons is interesting as well, as that's a selection that's only locked to certain units in the book. Can allow for some interesting range damage and defensive combos, say with the Zinch and Nurgle marks plus icons. I'd say perhaps Legionaries are particularly interesting in Black Legion as well, as they have that stratagem to make them turn off enemy obsec for a turn. Whenever that comes up, you're basically trading off command points for victory points. Not bad. There's definitely a lot of good stuff going for them, though I must admit they do have their downsides. They're not particularly outstanding in terms of damage output, and bolters in particular are perhaps a bit disappointing. I'd say perhaps their biggest issue might be that when you're using standard Chaos Space Marines, there's just many strong competitors outside the troop slot, and it means that quite a lot of people are just tempted to run barebones cultist squads to fill out the troops, and then load out on elites like Terminators or Chosen or something, which punch a bit harder and are a bit better to build around. Still though, definitely usable in my opinion, I'd rate them a 7 out of 10. Speaking of cultists, these are cheap chaff troops for just 5 points per model, 50 points for a unit, and unlike their counterparts and a bunch of different codexes, they do actually get obsec, which allows them to secure objectives over any enemy elites or things that don't. The main draw to cultists though is just literally that they fill the troop slot for 50 points and can still do things like actions and sit on home objectives where they don't really need to worry about their damage output, and just having access to cheap expendable screening units is a pretty big benefit. There's also that stratagem that allows you to fire into melee when cultists are tying down a unit, Plus a couple of different legions also have their bonuses, things like Alpha Legion or Iron Warriors. Both of those have a little bit more synergy than with cultist units, even if Iron Warriors are just using them as cannon fodder. Obviously cultists have all manner of weaknesses, they die easily to small arm fire, their damage output is pretty poor for the points, if they take casualties they'll have leadership issues, and they're not core with limited access to buffs, so they're never really going to be particularly efficient in terms of damage dealing, besides skirmishing with the lightest of infantry. Mere mortals could also be an issue in some lists, you can't have more of these than you have core infantry units, and if you're going heavy on demonkin and things, that might actually come into effect. Still though, they perhaps do still seem to be the most common troops choice run competitively, I'd rate them an 8 out of 10. They're definitely not going to do anything outstanding on the battlefield, but for doing the grunt work of the codex, they do seem to do that very well. Next up, we have their slightly more disturbing cousins, the Accursed Cultists, Games Workshop's recent kit where there's nice twisted mutations of cultist and demon. They're 6 points for the littler mutants, and 15 points for the bigger torments, and you have to take a little of both of them, meaning that their cheapest unit is 75 points. For upgrading over standard cultists to these guys, you do get some benefits. They've got some at least fairly decent melee threat with the damage to torments, they will chew through at least a few elite infantry, and they've got really quite good defensive rules, a feel no pain type save, ignoring morale, and regenerating models in your command phase, which can sometimes be handy for sneaking onto objectives when you are out of line of sight. They do get objectives secured as well, which is pretty handy for that. They've got an aura of fear as well, which messes with enemy troops leadership, and again certain legions will have better synergy with them. I think maybe word bearers are a particularly nice one for these, having an ability to get them extra AP. 
Basically, they're like cultists, but a little bit tougher, and they do actually have a bit of melee threat and some other advantages. As for downsides, they do have the usual cultist lack of synergy, and perhaps the biggest downside is that cheaper cultists for 50 points could do an adequate job of sitting on points for less cost. Even though they are a bit tougher, they are one of the units in the codex where the enemy can reasonably just dedicate small arms fire to and not be too bad. They might be inferior to standard cultists for some roles, such as doing actions, which they just can't do, as apparently they're just too mutated for that. And even having a little bit of combat power, they'll still struggle with heavier targets. They're not going to be killing Terminators or doing more than scratch tanks. Again, I feel like they're pretty usable, maybe just a little bit lacking in terms of their battle line units to give and take damage, but for some roles, I think that they're quite nice. Overall, I've chosen to rank them a 7 out of 10. Next up, and newest on the scene, are Traitor Guardsmen. These guys got a proper data sheet in a White Dwarf download for the kill team that they come in. It's 60 points for 10 of them, and they're basically another flavour of raised cultists. You pay 10 extra points for a trio of special weapons in the unit, plus plus one leadership and flak armor for a five plus save, which is actually fairly meaningful in cover versus small arms. Otherwise, they've basically got all the advantages and disadvantages of cultists, not being huge damage dealers despite the specials. And again, if you just wanted to hold down a point for super cheap, then the 10 points might not necessarily matter all that much. Honestly though, I do really quite like these. If you've got 10 points spare in a list and you don't know what to do with it, upgrading a standard squad of cultists to these guys seems very reasonable. The special weapons might conceivably kill one or two things over the course of the game, plus it's not like they're particularly less durable for the cost, having the extra save. Moving on to Elite's choices, and we'll start strong with the Chaos Terminators, Perhaps one of the most important units in the Codex at the moment. These guys are good on so many levels and have really good synergies with a bunch of the different legions. Plus they're one of the best places to put various psychic powers and stacking buffs out of the HQs. Terminators are 33 points per model or 38 with the fists. A generally all round solid stat line with decent toughness with a 2 plus save and armour of contempt. Good melee with their accursed weapons and the option to upgrade to some chain fists for some anti-armour duties. And even the combi bolters shouldn't be underestimated really. It can certainly hoover up light infantry. The common build for these guys is to give them the Black Rune of Damnation for a minus 1 to wound. And then focus a lot of durability boosts on them. Things like Illusory Supplication from a Dark Apostle. And maybe a Master of Possession giving them healing, plus 1 toughness and maybe even Delightful Agonies as well. The damage output is usually fairly adequate at base but you can certainly amp that up as well. Say for example, Abaddon re-rolls in Black Legion. But I think basically every single Legion has something good for these guys, whether it's Emperor's Children and ignoring the penalty to hit on the Power Fists, or Iron Warriors and being able to access a minus one damage stratagem. In general, most people seem to be most tempted by the Mark of Sanesh to be the best target for things like the Advance and Charge Prayer from the Dark Apostle, or delightful agonies. If you want to, they can deep strike as well, which is handy enough in some matchups. They can add on extra power fists and ranged weapons like combi melters or reaper auto cannons, and they're one of the best targets for stratagems in a big core unit as well. The one CP for a plus one to hit is pretty usable though. As for downsides, they are certainly fairly slow moving. If your opponent wants to stay away from them, they'll usually be able to, unless you advance and charge. They've not got objectives secured outside external buffs from certain legions like Iron Warriors or Black Legion. And potentially overinvestment in them with characters buffing one unit could just mean that they dominate their one area of the board, but then you're just weaker on other flanks, and your opponent might be able to just try and largely ignore them and focus on winning the rest of the game. Still though, their stacking buffs make them one of the strongest units that Chaos Space Marines can field right now. They're in the vast, vast majority of competitive lists, and I currently rank them a 10 out of 10. Moving on, and maybe just a shade lower in my opinion, we have The Chosen, an elite's choice for 25 points per model, and they very much feel like Terminator's Light to me. You save 8 points per model. You get basically the same sort of attack with the accursed weapons, but you do have a weaker defensive profile without the Terminator plate. Most of the boosts and synergies that work with Terminators work absolutely fine with them, and they do have a few other things to recommend them over the Terminators, Things like being able to take the mark and the icon for a nice squad wide boost, being able to ride in rhinos, and if they kill a unit then they get all the wanton rules for the rest of the game. I'd say perhaps their biggest downsize is not being able to take the power fist that terminators get, so they will still struggle with hard targets, and the 3 plus saves do mean that they just die a fair bit easier than terminators, particularly in cover. Otherwise fairly similar, fairly slow on the board, and no inbuilt obsec, unlike maybe some other Chaos Space Marines where their aggressive units like Terminators and Death Guard or Thousand Sons get that rule. Still though, very competitive unit, I'd rank them a 9 out of 10. Moving on, we have perhaps the last of the three great melee powerhouse units of Chaos Space Marines in Possessed, 28 points each, and for that you get a lot of raw might, a fast unit with a 9 inch move, a tanky profile with 3 wounds and toughness 5 and then demon invul save, 
and some generalist melee with 5 attacks at strength 5 and damage 2. Compared with the Chosen and the Terminators, they do have some downsides. They aren't core and they can't take marks, so that locks them out of a bunch of synergies. They do get on very nicely with the Master Possession though, with things like Cursed Earth and Warp Marks giving them boosts, as well as the usual healing and toughness. Otherwise, again, they've got plenty of synergy with various legions, maybe word bearers for that plus one to wound option, or the master of the union warlord trait for the extra AP, both of those are great on them, and creations of bile really like them with fighting on death. Again, another very strong unit, maybe one of their biggest weaknesses in terms of things that they match up against is minus one damage, they won't quite like Imperial Knight armages or fighting against certain death guard units as much. Still though, another absolute melee powerhouse of the Chaos Codex, I'd rate them a 9 out of 10 overall. Moving on, let's take a look at the Cult Marines, technically out of Codex, but usable by Chaos Space Marines. First up, we have the Corn Berserkers, shortly to be reincarnated in their own World Eaters Codex, no doubt. These Rageville Melee Blenders are 22 points per model, get a massive amount of Strength 5 or 6, AP 3 and Damage 1 attacks with their Icon, will pretty much straight up obliterate most infantry without a huge amount of wounds, and stack a whole load of saves on things like Heavy Infantry and Vehicles as well. Of course, these guys are much, much better in World Eaters, Getting the objective secured plus their legion trait really takes them to the next level, so they'd likely be a 8 or 9 out of 10 for these, rather than the 7 that have rated them for Chaos more generally. Otherwise, within Codex Chaos Space Marines, they generally need a bit of a hand getting to the front. They're really not all that tough for the cost, and will have big chunks taken out of them whenever they're exposed, so maybe get on quite well with Rhinos to keep them a little bit safer getting to the front. I feel like they're a unit that you need to invest just a little bit more in to get the max out of them. Currently I rate them a 7 out of 10, it'll be interesting to see if anything changes for them when the new book comes out. Moving on, and borrowing from the Death Guard we've got the Plague Marines, 21 points per model and a pretty solid data sheet, toughness 5 and minus 1 damage, and really quite a strong melee as all of their gear is free. A typical unit might take multiple flails plus great play cleavers and a couple of blight launchers for some range and be a fairly nasty general purpose threat. Again like Corn Berserkers though, they do really feel a bit legion locked, they're absolutely outstanding for the Death Guard, where they have far more synergies, their contagions of Nurgle and Objective Secured, whereas for Chaos Space Marines they just feel kind of okay, and you might well be better off putting it into Incodex units that you can get more buffs on like Terminators or Chosen. Not getting Legion traits is a bit annoying as well. Overall though, definitely hard to go too far wrong with on the strength of the datasheet alone, I'd rate them a 7 out of 10. Moving on, we've got the Rubric Marines of the Thousand Suns. They're 21 points per model, or 24 points for the Warp Flamers, which you should definitely take. And far more so than Plague Marines, these guys are really interesting in Codex Chaos Space Marines, as they're already kind of good on their own flat profile in Thousand Suns, but for some reason the Chaos Space Marines take their Warp Flamers to the next level, they let the Galaxy Burn rule giving them an extra 2 hits with those Flamers, turning them into absolutely savage damage dealers with those Warp Flamers. Each one of them gets 5 or 6 hits at strength 4 and AP-2 with Let the Galaxy Burn. It's going to stack a whole load of damage on anything that you can get in range with them, and that's not too bad on a unit that's decently tough with all this dust, and can potentially get in range just that bit easier with things like Warp Time. Again, like the other two, they certainly have their limits. Limited Legion Synergy as Cult Marines, they might struggle a bit versus hard targets, unless you can spare command points for a plus one to wound, and again, outside their home codex, they don't get objective secured. Still though, Let the Galaxy Burn, I think is good enough to make them a solid range damage dealer on their own merit, I'd rank them an 8 out of 10. Definitely very usable in competitive lists. Lastly, for the Cult Marines of the Dark Gods, we have the Noise Marines, 20 points base before their sonic weapons come into play, and again very much great in their home legion of the Emperor's Children, but a fair bit less tempting for other legions. I'd probably rate them either a low 8 or a high 7 for other legions, but a solid 9 out of 10 for the Emperor's Children. Getting the legion traits plus their other benefits is really nice, particularly in Emperor's Children, their melee damage gets a fair bit better, ignoring the penalty with those power fists is good. Otherwise, by far the best bit of the squad are the Blast Masters, they're really quite massive damage for the points cost that they're invested in, I'd certainly take one if you're running a unit. The Sonic Blasters I think are okay, but just not outstanding for the extra 5 points. Makes them more hard hitting, but a bit more of a glass cannon of a unit, though it does mean that you can use that Mortal Wound stratagem, particularly nice if you have a few ways of buffing them. Having Slanesh as a mark I think is no bad thing as well, it does leave them as a good target for multiple buffs, like Delightful Agonist. In general though, if that's not in play, again like the Corn Berserkers, they're not really that tough for the cost. Maybe a bit Alpha Strike if you're using them as primary damage dealers, but at least they can deal their damage from a bit further away. Overall, maybe a low 8 out of 10 or high 7 out of 10 outside of the Emperor's Children, 
but a solid 9 or so if you're running that legion. All of that plus ignoring penalties and objectives secured are pretty nice. Next up for the elites we have the Hellbrute, an elite's choice 405 points base, and in fairness while I think this was a bit on the underwhelming side last time it's got a bit more tempting in this codex, but still I'd say it's probably a bit subpar compared with a bunch of the infantry. It is a core unit so it can take re-rolls and marks and things, I feel like the mark of Zinch is fairly interesting for negating one saving throw each turn. I'd say maybe the range variants are a bit more interesting than the melee. The main issue with the melee is that it moves only 6 inches so it might struggle to catch things and being a vehicle having to move around terrain doesn't make that ideal. It's got minus 1 damage for a bit more survivability and say that his toughness is kind of so-so and he does have that interesting fire frenzy stratagem. When you get to shoot him he gets to fire back for 1 CP if he wants to. In general though I'd say that these guys are probably just a little bit over costed. Maybe not that far from being very usable, but between that and being a bit slow for a unit that's got a lot of options that are melee focused, I'd probably rate it a 6 out of 10. I do feel that just in general for Chaos Space Marines, their vehicles tend to be a bit more underwhelming than their infantry choices, as we'll talk about going forward. Next up though, we've got the rather brutal melee character that is the Master of Executions. 65 points without marks. I feel like it's often hard to justify pure melee characters compared with more frontline troops, but this guy maybe just has enough raw might to make it worth it. Each hit roll of a 6 gets you a couple of mortal wounds, which should mean that he's got a pretty good chance of punching through at least one attack like that each time he fights, and there's potentially quite a few interesting combos that you can do with him. Certainly anything that gives him full re-rolls to hit is very nice, whether it's just the word bearer's traits or one of the warlord traits. Besides that, he's got some champion style bonuses to fighting. Things like a bigger heroic intervention, and he also gets to reroll wound rolls against enemy characters. He quite likes the Mark of Slanesh to allow him to fight first, that's quite nice in combo with the heroic interventions. As for downsides, he's quite swingy depending on whether or not you roll those sixes or not, and he doesn't do a whole load for army synergy, but I think he certainly has enough strength to justify himself in his own steam. I'd rank him a 9 out of 10, quite a nice scary melee threat to have hiding behind, say, a durable Terminator battle line. Otherwise, there's a couple of elite choices out of the codex the Traitor Enforcer for the Traitor Guardsman. I feel like Games Workshop did a pretty decent job of making the Traitor Guardsman work well, but they really fell short here. It's 45 points for the Commissar type guy, and 65 points for his Chaos Ogrim bodyguard, and all they really do in terms of buffs are a small leadership boost to the Traitor Guardsman, which if you're doing that you're probably just best off getting more Traitor Guardsman squads in the first place. Unfortunately, whether or not you filled him just as the standard Commissar or the Commissar plus Ogryn, they neither hit particularly hard for their points cost, nor are particularly tough, so to be honest these guys just barely work on any level whatsoever. I'd rank them a 3 out of 10, I'd say the biggest reason to run them is just that Ogryn looks very cool. Outside of the Codex though, it seems that even these pale into comparison of the Galapox Infected, data sheets that are maybe just a little bit on the underwhelming side on their own steam, but are restrictive to the point of barely even being an option for Codex Chaos Space Marines due to the army detachment rules. For some reason you can only include these in a detachment that's entirely Nurgle Traitor Astartes, so that would mean that you have to have every single unit in that detachment marked by Nurgle, and that's going to restrict you to core and character choices only, which isn't exactly great. They're perhaps a bit more usable for Death Guard, but still fairly niche I think. For the actual units, the mutants with the big ones and the little guys are tough and somewhat fighty chaff, not particularly outstanding for 150 points, and I maybe feel like Accursed Cultists just do what they do flat better. They fill troops' choices and are obsec. The swarms, though, I think are a little bit more interesting. A fairly large unit of chaff that move 8 inches and regenerate models. They have their pros and cons for expendable units versus things like Cultists. Unfortunately, you also can't take the swarms without taking the big guys' unit, and again, that is a bit of a negative if you only wanted the one but not the other. Overall, due to the hideously restricted attachment rules, I'd rank them very low, maybe even a 1 out of 10. Even if that wasn't the case though, I don't think I'd be particularly happy with them. Maybe a 6 for the swarms and a 5 for the big guys. Not unusable, but just perhaps a bit underwhelming. Back to the core codex again now, and for fast attack we have Chaos Spawn. 25 points per model, fairly cheap and expendable melee beasts, with that interesting rule that each time they're attached they heal back up to their full wound count, meaning that they can be kind of hard for small isolated units to deal with. Being a whole unit that only costs 25 points is an advantage in its own right as well, they can be cheap units that can be kind of handy for board control, or just being an annoying presence that the opponent has to try and get line of sight on and deal with if they're sat on objectives for example. Their melee can be okay with damage 2 plus their random buff, and they do have the fear keyword as well. Otherwise they maybe have some slightly limited synergy with the rest of the codex, 
The saves aren't exactly great, so they're a good thing for your opponent to dedicate small arms to, and their movement isn't particularly outstanding either for dedicated melee units that don't do anything else. Overall, I'd say they're fairly usable though, particularly in just individual units just for pure annoyance factor, I'd rate them a 7 out of 10. Moving on, we have the jump back chaos of the Raptors, 21 points per model in the fast attack slot, cheap fast moving infantry with chain swords, perhaps are the best used as a small squad of 5 jumping around doing objectives and bullying infantry, though I guess if you wanted to make them damage dealers, Mark of Corn for mass strength 5 attacks isn't bad. They've got their aura of minus 1 leadership, which is quite nice in Night Lords as well, they also have a couple of stratagems for jump units. Compared with things like bikes, they do have the advantages of being infantry to make good use of cover. And if you're running Black Legion, they could also get full rerolls from Harken, both to hit and to wound. Like a lot of Chaos Melee threats though, they have some very stiff competition. If you actually want damage dealers, Warp Talons are generally going to do you better, never mind other things like Possessed, which are also very tough. Perhaps best used for small harassment units rather than your main battle line. Overall, I'd rate them a 7 out of 10, usable but not standout. Next up, we've got the Chaos Bikers, 30 points per model. And despite having disadvantages with terrain compared with things like Raptors, they are pretty interesting with their very fast move, 14 inches and a 6 inch advance if needed. They're one of the units that can take both marks and icons as well, so it means that their melee can again be a bit bitey with strength 5 and AP-2 with corn, or potentially get more toughness and some better range power with Zinch or Nurgle. They pack a little bit of shooting power with those combi bolters and the option of specials, and maybe as a unit they're perhaps best in Red Corsairs, they have a unique stratagem for them, plus the ability to advance and charge is extra nice when that advance is basically 20 inch move. Outside of Red Corsairs though, I feel like they're quite a niche unit, their damage isn't very standout again for the cost, their damage is really quite anti-infantry focused so they won't be killing heavies and things, their special weapons are a bit expensive, and their strong competition from the other fast attack. Overall, I'd rate them a 6 out of 10, maybe a little bit high out of that rank, but still they feel like a unit that's a bit on the niche side. Next up, we've got the Warp Talons, 28 points demon kin with jump packs, they move nice and fast, have inbuilt deep strike, and can mess up enemy infantry with their lightning claws. Having the inbuilt wound reroll does mean that they're a bit better against punching up against tougher targets, particularly if you can get something like a Master of Possession plus 1 strength buff on them. For Legion Synergy, they'll work nicely with anything with good melee bonuses. I think creations of Bile and Word Bearers, again, both make good use out of them. And they do have the chance to prevent enemy fallback for non-vehicles as well, and that can be quite disruptive at the right moment if you win the roll-off. As for downsides, I'd say perhaps their biggest weakness compared with their competitors for the role is that they're just really not all that tough comparatively with, say, Possessed, Chosen, or Terminators. And even with the wound rerolls, damage 1 and strength 4 will still struggle against the toughest targets. Vehicles and high save armor of contempt things just won't care about that all that much. Again, Demon Kin do have some positives and negatives. It does mean that they're not core and can't take marks, so are locked out of a bunch of synergies, but will be okay with a Master of Possession if you can keep them in range. Overall though, certainly interesting fast moving melee maulers. I'd rate them at 8 out of 10 overall, certainly a competitive pick, perhaps just a little bit easily killed though when they're locked out with the wrong sort of firepower. Lastly for the fast attack we have the Venom Crawler, 105 points for a great big spider walker, and kind of an interesting value proposition in that it does some okay general purpose shooting and combat damage of its own, but also buffs your psychic tests. The excruciator cannons and the melee give you a bunch of attacks at damage of 2. It's quite fast moving with a 12 inches, and as a demon engine it's at least fairly tough to kill, with a 5 plus inball save, regenerating wounds and stratagems including 1 for minus 1 damage. The plus one boost to psychic test certainly isn't negligible though, particularly with Master Possession, Chaos Psychic really is quite strong. If you can keep that active while it does a fair few turns of damage, then I feel like you're winning overall for 105 points. As for issues, its damage profile will be good against some things, but anything with either high toughness or minus one damage will make it kind of weak. I think you do need to get mileage out of both of its benefits to make it really stand out, and it does have a 5 plus explosion which gives it the opportunity to hurt its own units as a bit of a buffing piece. Still though, I think that these are pretty usable. I'd say maybe the single best demon engine in the codex for the cost, I'd rate it an 8 out of 10. While we're on fast things, I thought we'd talk about the Helldrake, 165 points for a flyer. It moves very quickly, so it should be able to get that Bale Flamer in range of what it wants to, and get easy lines of sight. It can melee aircraft, it's at least somewhat durable with minus 1 to hit plus the usual demon engine things, the inbuilt saves, regeneration, and minus 1 damage strat. I feel like these things just rarely make the cut for Chaos Marine list though, as even with the Let the Galaxy Burn, the Bale Flamer is just low damage output for the cost. It does pay a big premium for its speed, and I don't think that the autocannon is well balanced at all. 
very underwhelming in comparison. As a flyer, it also doesn't do anything for you on objectives as well, which doesn't help in ninth. Overall, perhaps a bit on the underwhelming side. Maybe not bad as an annoying distraction or something to get lines of sight on key units, but overall I'd rate it a 5 out of 10. Heavy support next, and next up we have the Land Raider, 265 points per model. And in fairness to them, Games Workshop did give this some decent buffs going into the Codex, a Toughness 9 and Soul Shatter Last Cannons for D6 plus 2 damage on those Sponsons. It is genuinely decently quite tough now, and it does have some ranged firepower that'll count. Perhaps it's best used for transporting units like Corn Berserkers, things that really need to be protected before they get into combat. Unfortunately, the buffs really don't seem to have been quite good enough for people to want to use them regularly though. For raw firepower and defence, it's still just maybe a touch overcosted as a damage dealer. You need to make use of the transport capacity too. And as with normal land raiders, it leads to the problem that you want to rumble them up the board, expose them to enemy fire, and potentially have them tagged in combat and have all that fancy firepower ruined and forced to shoot at one thing. On top of that, it's maybe just not super necessary for most units in the codex. You need a unit that was both slow, fragile, and dangerous up close. Most units are either fairly fast or fairly tough, making the land raider a bit more redundant. So maybe only good for certain things like those Corn Berserkers, otherwise you may as well just have more of the unit to start with. On top of that, even for units like Corn Berserkers, Rhinos work pretty well for them. They get the job done simply and effectively, without tying you into a really expensive tank when, say, in a combat army, you might have just wanted more combat guys. Overall, definitely better than it was before the Codex, with the stat line improvements, but has still rated a 5 out of 10. Just rarely going to be an optimal pick. Next up, we've got the Predator tank, which did also get some improvements. 130 points base now, it gains toughness 8 and the soul shatter last cannons on the turrets. Probably the biggest reason to run these is if you want long range, 48 inch range anti-tank, this thing will fit that bill. Unfortunately, despite the stat line improvements, it's still neither particularly tough nor particularly good damage for the cost. That 130 points doesn't get you any sponsons, which you probably want, so it's going to be far more expensive than 130. It's got limited access to buffs, both as a vehicle and a ranged unit in a codex that's more suited to melee. The auto cannon variant is a bit overcosted compared with the last cannons, and again, it doesn't really want to be locked up in combat, maybe even more so than most things in the book. Even for dedicated long range anti tank firepower, it's got stiff competition from things like Chaos Contempt to Dreadnoughts, which have core so allow you some interesting buffs. Overall, I'd rate these a 4 out of 10, just not particularly good return on investment for the damage that they bring. Next up, we've got the Defiler, 165 points, and just in general, I'd say it's a bit of an overcosted demon engine. It does have some solid threat, both at range and in melee, and it's got the demon engine regeneration, invulnerable saves, minus one damage, and demon forge. Demon forge may be a bit more relevant on this guy, as he costs a bit more points and is packing more threats. Again, the same with plenty of the other vehicles. In general, Codex Chaos Space Marines tends to be geared more around melee infantry than vehicles. It does have some interesting options in things like Iron Warriors, though. I think that the Defiler's main issue though is just being a bit overcosted again for what it brings. Could easily go down another 15 to 20 points, I think, to better make it compete with the rest of the book. Next up, we've got the Vindicator, 130 points, and perhaps a tank that I've got a little bit more time for. This thing does have its issues with a 24 inch range and the blast keyword which does mean it's definitely more at risk of getting locked up in combat than most other units, particularly as it wants to go forward, and the blast rule means it can't fire in combat normally. Its big gun did get quite a lot more threatening though, an average of 5 shots at strength 10, AP 4 and damage D6, and particularly with a 10 point siege shield and armour of contempt, it's hard to kill at range for the points that it costs. The indicators seem a bit more popular in Space Marines with a ranged focus, in particular Iron Warriors get on well with it, They've got a nice stratagem for it that allows you to reroll a damage roll, boost the number for targeting blasts, and also allows you to fire an engagement range, which is pretty handy insurance. Otherwise, for weaknesses, besides things already mentioned, the damage can still be a bit swingy with D6, but at least with D3 plus 3 shots, that's far less bad than it was before. Overall, I'd rate it 7 out of 10, one of Chaos Space Marine's better shooting options. Next up, we've got the Forge Fiend, 140 points, including its cheapest guns. Perhaps this guy's best for high AP, damage 3, firepower. Not bad at killing medium infantry like Terminators. Again, it's got all the benefits of being a demon engine. The extra defense is handy, and Demon Forge can be okay. And again, we'll do better with Iron Warriors, as with most of this heavy support section, ignoring cover and having a stratagem for minus 1 to wound. In general though, maybe similar to the Defiler, the damage output of this one is just a little bit on the low side, and if you take the Blast Ectoplasma Cannons, it's another one that just doesn't want to wind up in combat, otherwise it's not going to be able to shoot. Overall, I'd rate it a 6 out of 10, usable firepower, but not standout. For the other Dino Robot, we've got the Mauler Fiend, 
140 points at base, a fairly dangerous melee with 6 attacks that damage d3 plus 3, plus maybe Lasher 10 draws if you shell out for them. This guy basically just wants to charge towards the enemy and smash things up. He really likes your legions with innate combat buffs, such as word bearers or maybe black legion on the charge. As for downsides, again I just feel like it's a touch over costed for what it brings. The damage D3 plus 3 melee is okay against heavies, though when that's basically the only thing that it's bringing for 140 points, it's just still not super exciting. As a big vehicle, it's going to need to negotiate terrain, and that might make it hard to hide as it moves up, and just risk it getting shot. I feel like if you just weigh this up against a squad of possessed at the same 140 points for a squad going forward, the possessed are probably going to win out on a fair few factors, particularly being infantry being able to hide a bit better, and then hitting with 25 attacks at damage 2 when they hit home. I feel like that's going to be better against a lot of targets, even some heavy ones. Overall not unusable, but again overshadowed, I'd rate a 6 out of 10. Next up we've got more Twisted Flesh and Metal with the Obliterators, heavy support for 90 points base, and maybe a bit of a weird case of a unit with some really big synergies and buffs that they can get, a fairly mighty generalist profile, but just perhaps a points cost that puts them out of the area of being truly outstanding. Being able to select the different profile of the guns is pretty handy. You've got a unit that will be effective against hordes and against heaviest tanks. And perhaps one of the single best things about them is that you can potentially get a crazy amount of points back on the board with a master of possession with Pact of Flesh. In theory, if you've got one obliterator dead and one wounded, you could be restoring something like 130 points worth of obliterator to the board with one cast, which is pretty balmy. If you've got a Master of Possession dedicated to them, then Warp Marks is also pretty nice for their target as well, giving them a plus one to wound. Otherwise, their firepower does have some advantages. They get to move and shoot for no penalty, fire in combat with a penalty, some fairly reasonable melee if they are charged, so just tagging them in combat isn't always the best option, and inbuilt Deep Strike to guarantee them the Alpha Strike if that's the most important thing. Again, as with most Chaos Firepower, going to be stronger in Alpha Legion with the Ignore's cover and some useful stratagems to boost them, plus there's a couple of useful Warlord traits for them. Maybe the biggest letdown is just that their Firepower isn't super strong for the points despite being very flexible. They're fairly close range for slow moving heavy support infantry once they get onto the board, and they don't have core being demon kin, they have some more limited synergies, even if they do have some good ones. Overall though, I feel like if the legions were maybe a bit more set up in mind of buffing the ranged chaos space marines rather than the combat ones, these guys would be a bit better. They're certainly a staple for iron warriors lists. Overall I'd say that they're solidly usable, I'd currently rank them a 7 out of 10. Lastly for the heavy support we have the Havocs, 125 points for the squad base, though that does come with some built in heavy weapons now. The Havocs have access to some longer ranged heavy support firepower with core, not many units have that besides them and say Chaos Contempt to Dreadnoughts, so are kind of interesting for that regard alone. I'd say most of the weapons are fairly flexible and well balanced, perhaps the Heavy Bolter is a bit underwhelming but I think that you could make an argument for the rest of them. The squad can take marks, Slanesh in particular is interesting as they have that stratagem to make a damage result into a 6, if you've got a squad full of Laz Cannons and Missile Launchers it might be that you can sneak one wound through to have that. Otherwise for heavy support infantry they do have some advantages, they get to move and shoot without penalty again, they're a bit tougher than standard Chaos Marines with their toughness 5, and again they'll like the ranged synergies like Alpha Legion and Iron Warriors, Alpha Legion allowing them to shoot and then hide them with Conceal is quite a fun one. Overall, again I'd say that their firepower is pretty reasonable for the cost, fairly balanced but not super standout for the codex. Perhaps they more than just about any other unit don't want to get tagged in combat as they just completely won't be able to shoot as infantry. And again, if more ranged chaos lists were a thing, then I feel like they'd be a bit more tempting. Overall though, again a solidly usable unit, a 7 out of 10, perhaps not one of the top choices of the codex though. Next up we've got the Lord of Skulls, 575 points base. And this great big Cornate Lord of War has some massive concentrated damage, particularly in melee with that cleaver, though certainly isn't useless at range either. I do think that it's quite fun that his attacks profile degrades upwards, and he has his exploding sixes to hit stratagem, so even when he's on his last legs he's still going to be brutal in combat. He does cost a lot of points, but at least he's fairly tough, a 2 plus save with armour of contempt will keep him safe from all but the heaviest firepower. He can use that Demon Forge stratagem for a plus 1 to hit, and minus 1 damage for a stratagem, though that does cost 2 CP. As a ridiculously big and hefty unit, just about any buff that you're allowed to target this thing with is usually going to be a big one for good reward. It's quite nice with a Warp Smith for the plus 1 to hit and a bit of healing, and any of the stratagems that you're allowed to use on him with the Legion that you're playing. The main downside I'd say is the points cost, 575 is going to be a massive chunk of your army, and that is a bit of a weakness in itself. 
if he can be ignored or screened or locked up for a turn or two, then he might not be providing enough value for the points cost that you have spent on him. Otherwise, Titanic units have some issues with terrain. They can't hide behind obscuring, so if your opponent does have an obscene amount of anti-tank guns, he could go down. And as a Titanic demon engine, while the rules that can affect him are very good, a lot of the buffs in the codex are reserved for infantry. Overall, I'd say not unusable. Certainly going to be a very intimidating threat to have on the other side of the board. I rate him a 6 out of 10 overall, just a little bit point heavy for the majority of lists. Next up we've got the Noctolith Crown, 100 points for a nice star of chaos to put behind your army. This one gives you an expanding aura of 4 plus inball saves as the game goes on, protecting your Traitorous Astartes units against ranged attacks. It's got a similar aura of leadership debuff as well, which can be a little bit handy I suppose, and allows actions to farm command points from certain characters too, which maybe does lessen the burden of bringing one along. It does have a small defensive shooting attack as well, which might be relevant sometimes, but a lot of the time that's just really not going to matter. As for downsides, it is an immobile fortification. It could get locked up in melee and prevent you shooting at the enemy units that locked it up potentially, and it does mean that your opponent can potentially work around it and just fight in a section of the board where it isn't. Fortifications have some restrictive deployment rules which can make them a bit of an issue on certain maps, and say at 100 points it just costs quite a lot for a fairly passive unit, one that's broadly just going to sit there and add you a little bit of durability and some CP. A 4 plus inball save is pretty decent admittedly, though it's maybe just a little bit less important than it was before Armour of Contempt. Against things like AP-1 fire it's basically going to be kind of irrelevant for most units, and it is going to be locked to the area of the board where it is around, which isn't going to be too big in the first few turns. The CP farming trick is also far less good for Psychers as well, basically preventing them from casting a power. For all those negatives though, I don't think it's unusable. 4 plus invors plus command points are both good things. If you know that you're going to be able to put it down somewhere useful, then for 100 points, it could be justified in some lists, I think. I'd rate it a 6 out of 10 overall, a bit on the niche side. Lastly, for the main units before the cast of characters, we have the Chaos Rhino. 18 points for a cheap and fairly expendable transport. Okay durability for the cost with Armour of Contempt, and carries a whole squad of expensive Chaos Marines into battle. Like the Land Raider, it's maybe best with things with relatively low durability, but fairly high hitting power that want to be close. Probably maximally good with Corn Berserkers in Chaos Space Marines. Could be okay for things like Noise Marines, Rubric Marines, or maybe even Havocs perhaps. If you want a cheap little bit of extra damage from it, the Combi Flamer is quite efficient. Let the Galaxy Burn with 5 or 6 auto hits makes that okay. In general though, it's not exactly a primary damage dealer, certainly doesn't do that very well. And as mentioned for the Land Raider, quite a lot of choices are tough enough to foot slog across the board, and might even prefer to do so, so they can get things like command phase buffs like prayers. If it dies while the unit is embarked as well, that can potentially take out a fair few of your own points that way. Say if a couple of chosen die out of a 10 unit squad when the Rhino dies, that's another 50 points just gone. Overall, I'd rate the Rhino a 7 out of 10. A usable choice for getting various elite Chaos Marines from A to B, though I'd say probably not mandatory. Moving on to the HQ section next, and we'll start out with the Chaos Lords. 90 points base, or 110 points base for the Terminator one. They're your standard issue buffing and fighting character choice, giving you a reroll aura on an infantry character, and a reasonable combat stat line with a 4 plus invul. I'd say the single biggest reasons that you might want to take a Chaos Lord are the various relics and warlord traits that can only be taken by infantry, there are quite a few powerful ones out there between the various legions, and I feel like in general if you're going for that sort of build, I'd be more tempted by the Terminator one to safeguard the investment and get him a slightly better stat line. I guess the Thunderhammer on the regular Lord though is kind of cool. As for downsides, I'd say the main one might be competition. The Chaos Space Marines have multiple excellent HQ choices that they compete against, strong buffing characters, and if you want a melee beatstick character, then building around a Lord Discordant or Demon Prince will typically give you better results. They're just bigger, stronger characters in the first place, so the scary melee chaos buffs go a bit further. For delivering them into combat as well, if you want to, they are a bit slow as well, now they can't take jump packs anymore. Again, another small disadvantage compared with the Lord Discordant and Demon Prince. Overall, perfectly usable. I'd rate them a 7 out of 10 overall. They're just not really the stars of the show within the section. Next up, we've got the Exalted Champion. 90 points for basically a Chaos Lieutenant more or less. It allows a reroll wound aura and it works on flamers which can be handy for certain units, say for example Rubric Marines if you desperately wanted him to buff them. He has a bit of a stat line trade off, he loses his invul saves and some raw wounds and attacks for a built in Exalted Axe and Combi Melter, two fairly decent bits of gear to be fair to him. In general though I feel like for the same cost as a Lord he's almost never one that you'd really want to take instead of a Lord, 
If you're going to be stacking the excellent Chaos buffs on him, you really want to do that on a better character like the Lord. And he's also super inflexible as well. He doesn't get any war gear options whatsoever. Overall, I'd rate him a 6 out of 10. Not bad for a cheap source of rerolls for a bit of gear, if you absolutely want to have the lowest investment buffing HQ possible. Next up, we've got the Sorcerers, uh, 95 points or 110 for the Terminator one. The Chaos Space Marine Psychic powers aren't bad. Maybe the standouts from the Dark Hereticus discipline are Death Hex, Prescience, Warp Time, and just switching into Smite when the enemy gets close. They can also help out with some Psychic Secondaries and a bit of Deny the Witch, and Codex Chaos Space Marines has a few really nice options for better Psychic casts and traits. I do like the one that allows you to get an extra cast. Taking a Mark is also kind of tempting, as that allows you some nice defensive spells, such as the Slanesh one for the Feel No Pain that's good on Terminators and Chosen. As for downsides, they don't really want to be on the front line, they don't have all that much combat threat and no Invul save in defence. Again, they're slow moving, and the enemy might be able to cancel out those powers if they do have their own very decent Psychic Denial abilities. The single biggest weakness of the Sorcerers, though, is the existence of the Master of Possession and their spells which are just on a whole extra level. I feel like they're generally going to be a second choice compared with them. Speaking of which, the Master of Possession is 105 points, and while the standard Sorcerer powers are perfectly usable, his are outright spectacular. Pact of Flesh I think is the best one by far, resurrect one model and heal the wounds on one, it's just got so many applications throughout the codex. Really nice just to regenerate Terminators that have got a load of defensive buffs on them and make the squad even harder to kill and you can potentially set them up closer to the enemy to shorten the charge rolls. It can be pretty great for just raw points returned to the Blord on Obliterators, and can give Abaddon another phase of life by healing a few wounds on him. That will mean that the enemy needs to deal another phase worth of damage to him. That's pretty well auto-include in just about every single Chaos Space Marine list in my opinion. Otherwise though, Mutated Invigoration is nice, an extra pip of toughness on Terminators is good, and he can flex into the strength if it makes more sense against the target that they're fighting. And besides that, most of the rest is fine. Warp Marks, Cursed Earth and Infernal Power are all good too. He also has that Sacrifice ability which allows him to cast more reliably. You can potentially sacrifice a unit and then just heal it straight back up with Pact of Flesh if you don't happen to have a better target for that. And again, you can potentially even do that to shorten the charge distance for a unit, even on a unit that hadn't taken casualties if you kill one of your own models. Otherwise, handy enough for Psychic the Secondaries and Deny the Witch. Has the same access to decent Psychic Support Relics as the Sorcerers, and again can also do delightful agonies for Feel No Pain. Again, like the Sorcerers, not an enormous amount of damage and defence, very much a buffing character rather than a frontline combatant, and enemy Psychic Denial could potentially throw a spanner in the works. Overall, though, ridiculously good value. I rate him the full 10 out of 10. Sticking with very strong buffing characters, we next have the Dark Apostle. 95 points before any marks again, and again a very solid support piece for the scary chaos melee squads walking forwards. Illusory supplication is maybe the default go-to prayer, on a 2 plus to mean that your unit can't be hit on a 1 to 3, so that'll mean that a lot of high ballistic skill attacks just straight up fail against them. Then if it makes sense otherwise in the game, you could potentially flex out to re-rolling hit rolls in melee, or maybe if you're playing with Sinesh marks to give them advance and charge, both of those are pretty strong as well. The prayers do have their positives and negatives, they can't be denied like psychic powers which is quite good, though it can be a bit painful if you do roll that one. Dark Apostles I think go from very good to absolutely great in word bearers, where you've got an option to have them cast two different prayers per turn, basically doubling the value as a buffing character there, and I've got plenty of other fun upgrades for them besides that. The Attendant Dark Disciples can tank some big hits for the unit, and they get a 4 plus invul save as well. And if they eat a really big damage shot, then that actually makes him significantly harder to take out than, say, just a priest on his own. In terms of downsides, he doesn't really have all that much combat threat, unless you invest multiple relics, warlord traits, or potentially his own self-buffing prayer on him. And otherwise, I do feel that for 95 points, a single buff, even if it's a good one, maybe is okay, but not super, super great. Perhaps putting him at just out of reach of things like the Master of Possession, maybe. Overall though, a very solid buffing character, appears in tons of competitive lists, helping out Terminators or Chosen or things, I'd rank him a 9 out of 10. Next up, we've got the Warpsmith, 80 points base, and gives 2 main buffs, a plus 1 to hit for a vehicle, which is good for the really big ones like Lords of War, plus repairing a few wounds as well. Fairly simple and straightforward, handy enough to have if you've got a bunch of vehicles in a gun line, you can easily justify him as an HQ choice there. His melee isn't terrible and he's got a 2 plus save with Armour of Contempt as well. And in Iron Warriors his melee can kind of go from okay to pretty spectacular with the Techno Venomous Mecho Tendrils 
giving him a box of mortal wounds. Perhaps his biggest weakness is largely being tied to Chaos Vehicles. If they're the strongest things in the book, or you're running loads of them, then you'll be running him most likely. But at the moment, the focus does seem to be a bit more on the combat infantry. I guess he might struggle to keep up a bit with faster demon engines as well as they move around the board, and it makes him a bit more tempting for things that are going to be slowly advancing, or just sitting back as a gun line. Still though, I think it's pretty reasonable value for what he brings, and I rate him a 7 out of 10. Next up, we've got the rather twisted Lord of Machines that is the Lord Discordant, a 175 point HQ choice, and a fairly convincing melee murder machine with a few other benefits. He gets a bunch of pretty threatening melee attacks between his normal profile, mecha tendrils, and bladed limbs, and having just a massive amount of attacks with 14 attacks base means that he is a pretty awesome choice for that Flames of Spite Warlord trait, the one that gives him reroll wound rolls and mortals on sixes. Most units that he touches will feel it very hard when they fight him. In general, he's pretty nice for many of the other relic upgrades though. The Gorget of Eternal Hate is quite a nice one for giving him a plus one save on top of his already decent two plus, and could be quite nice for things like the Selenesh Intoxicating Elixir as well, to mean that he can't die in this one turn and will live to fight back. Otherwise, he's got a lot of good things going for him. It's fairly fast, fairly tough, and gets character protection. The Bell Flamer will be pretty dangerous with Let the Galaxy Burn, and he's extra nasty versus enemy vehicles, of course, corrupting them for a bit of extra damage and doing more in melee if you take that toxin injector. As for weaknesses, the terrain can be an issue with his big base. It does mean that even with a good movement characteristic, he might struggle to both hide behind terrain and then pop out for a charge. In terms of durability, I think he still needs to be really quite careful in terms of being exposed, as if the enemy can line up anti-tank weapons on him, it's going to be prime target for gunning down. Overall though, a very solid HQ's choice indeed. I'd rate him a 9 out of 10. Perhaps the closest competition for him for generic characters that are kings of melee in the Chaos Codex is the Demon Prince, though there's absolutely no reason that you couldn't run both. It's 135 points base, or 180 points with wings, the requisite mark and weapon, and it's just a strong all-rounder that again is very good for taking the really good warlord traits and relics that Chaos Space Marines can bring, and throwing it into battle quite quickly with the wings. For warlord traits, Flames of Spite and Hatred Incarnate are both great, and it's very nice with demon weapons as well. The Nurgle Golax one with its auto wounds and ignoring damage caps is very popular, although I think that most of the others are also pretty good, such as a lock of the black for mortal wounds. He gets psychic powers as well, or Korn gets more attacks, he gets a reroll aura, and he gets a fear aura as well, so a few other benefits on top of just being a raw melee combatant. As for weaknesses, maybe even more so than the Lord Discordant, he's just really quite fragile when exposed for the big points cost that he has. Again, needs to play really quite cagey and try and make sure that the opponent can't target him with too many things. He does have some advantages over the Lord Discordant though, with the fly keyword being able to traverse terrain a lot better. Overall, I'd rank him a 9 out of 10, another very scary competitive choice for Codex Chaos Marines. Next up, we've got the Dark Commune, 100 points for basically a fun and twisted Cultist Command Squad, one of Games Workshop's latest additions to the range. This little HQ unit brings four main buffs, a single psychic power that he can take prescience, plus two leadership for nearby Cultists, one prayer to the Dark Gods, and a reroll aura of ones for Cultists. As Cultists, they do have limited options within the Codex, these guys can only bear a few keyworded relics, though not many, and I feel like their models really are quite fun ones, Nice and twisted and weird chaos. I feel like overall they're usable enough if you're supporting a couple of units of accursed cultists. They seem to be the unit that's most suited to getting good value out of their buffs. For just about anything else though, you're probably better off with the other HQ buffing units. They are locked out of a bunch of choices. They can't take Death Hex for example or Illusory Supplication. And they're very fragile if they're exposed with even small arms just laying waste to the squad fairly quickly. Overall, I think just in general, while Accursed Cultists aren't quite efficient enough to be frontline damage dealers carrying the army, these guys are probably rarely going to see play. Overall, I'd rank them a 6 out of 10. Named characters next, and we'll start off with the big man himself. Abaddon the Despoiler is 300 points, and currently is just so good that a whole load of Chaos lists run him, whether or not they're Chaos Space Marines, and basically regardless of Legion, even though he is stronger in Black Legion. He certainly costs a ton of points at 300, but for what he brings for that value, he is still pretty phenomenal. Massive damage, massive toughness, and buffs. In combat, he'll kick out a whole load of damage 3 attacks with Drachnian, or double the attacks with the Talon of Horus. He gets 3 different Warlord traits, which give you various different synergies with things like ranged weapons. He is very annoying to take out with a 2 plus save with Armor of Contempt, a 4 plus Invul, 
the mark of Zinch to deny a failed save, the mark of Nurgle to mean that you're not wounding him on twos, and then of course you can't lose any more than three wounds in a single phase, meaning that if you've punctured all of those swingy barriers, then that's all you can do for a bit. As a supreme commander, he's really easy to field, very popular even in non-Chaos Marine armies, like say Chaos Knights leading a bunch of war dogs, his rerolls even work on them as well. Within Chaos Space Marines though, he does give out massive buffs, four rerolls to hit on one unit, and an aura of plus one to charges. It's even better in Black Legion, where if he targets a core unit there, they get to reroll wound rolls as well. And as a Black Legion Supreme Command Attachment, he does unlock their stratagem. It means that you could have a once per game boost like Advance and Charge for one CP to nick the Red Corsair's Doctrine for a turn, and that can give him a surprising boost into combat. It's also got all the deity keywords for various different buffs and things that you can get from psychic powers or prayers or things. As for downsides, he is a bit slow moving, and he is likely to have a turn or two where he just can't catch up with the enemy. And if he does get exposed, then anything with multi-phase damage, like shooting, psychic, and assault, could potentially bring him down a bit faster than he would normally be able to. Overall, though, he is ridiculously strong compared with many of the other data sheets. I've ranked him a full 10 out of 10 here. He pops up in more competitive Chaos Space Marine lists than he doesn't, and adds strength to Marines of basically every single flavour. The Mysterious Cypher next, and for 90 points as an Agent of Chaos. Again, he can be taken freely in multiple different legions. I'd say perhaps one of his single most disruptive abilities is messing with the opponent's command point regeneration. Quite a lot of armies have ways to farm command points, and he can deny a whole bunch of CP coming into the opponent if they have one. Besides this, he's an infantry character that doesn't have a ton of synergy with the army that he's fielded with, but he's fairly tough and can't be hit on a 1-3. to three. And if he's in a bad situation, he could potentially use his escape rule to get out of peril. Besides that, he's got some okay pistol damage, a 6-shot bolt pistol and a 3-shot plasma pistol, and he should usually be able to bring it to bear being character screened and can fire after he advanced or fell back. In general though, it still doesn't stack out to particularly awesome damage, not really having that much melee power compared with most other Chaos characters, and in general he isn't going to have too much synergy with the rest of the army that you're playing, he just does his own thing, milling in and around your forces. Overall though, I think he does have some interesting attributes, and rank him a 7 out of 10 overall. Moving on to characters that are a bit more Legion specific, I thought we'd just rattle through them a little bit quicker. I guess maybe Fabius Bile isn't quite so Legion specific, as he's got the Agent of Chaos keyword, so you can include him in non-Creations armies. But overall, he's really quite an underwhelming choice, Creations of Bile being really quite popular as a competitive faction, but Fabius very rarely making an appearance in their lists. The unfortunate thing for him is that he does give some really interesting surgical enhancements to various Chaos Marine units, but to be able to be a target of them, you can't have a mark, and in general, you're usually just better off with a predictable boost that a mark would bring, rather than gambling on whatever he rolls up. Otherwise, he just doesn't really do too much in terms of buffs, though for a character that doesn't really look like he's got standout melee, with the bonus attacks that he gets, he is a little bit punchier than you might expect. Overall, though, probably just not quite enough for his 90 points cost, I'd rate him a 6 out of 10. Next up, we've got Harkon World Claimer, the Black Legion Raptor type character with a great big hell spear. He moves fast, has fairly solid melee, and has full rerolls for core or character units. If you select a Raptor unit as the target of that buff, they also get to reroll wound rolls as well, and makes them genuinely interesting for Black Legion, I think. Perhaps his biggest downside is that he is a non generic character, and that means that you can't just select your combination of favourite buffs like demon weapons or warlord traits for him. And I think overall, stacking those sort of things on Lord's Discordance or a Demon Prince might be a bit better for a Smash character. He also maybe competes with Abaddon a bit in terms of Black Legion rerolls. You've already got those in ample amount from the despoiler himself. Overall, though, still pretty solid, I think. I'd rate him an 8 out of 10. Lucius the Eternal might not be the prettiest of Chaos Space Marines, but for Emperor's Children, I do think he's pretty standout. He's a very strong combatant against anything with good weapon skill, getting a bunch of extra attacks and extra damage. It's interesting that he's got the combination of fights first and also making the enemy fight last. Really means that he's going to have the advantage if he gets to heroically intervene or anything. And on top of that, he brings further really interesting things, Chaos Lord rerolls, his Shrieking Souls aura, and even a Doom Siren for a bit of shooting. For Emperor's Children, I think he's really quite standout as a solid special character to lead the army. Between his great combat and other benefits for 120 points, I think he's a very good pick. I'd rate him a 9 out of 10 overall. Next up for the World Eaters, and again shortly to be reincarnated in his own new codex, we've got Khan the Betrayer. 140 points for a whole ton of strength 7, AP minus 4 and damage 2 attacks. 
fighting twice and ignoring modifiers to hit. Otherwise it's fairly simple, just raw melee might and some lord rerolls, though he does have the unfortunate tendency to try and off fellow world eaters if they get too close to him. Overall I'd say usable but not standout, maybe a bit more of a fun and fluffy pick for world eaters to lead them screaming into battle. Lastly for the Legion Lock special characters, we've got Huron Blackheart of his Red Corsair Renegade, 140 points, and I'd say the main reason to bring him is his 4 rerolls to hit for core units, Chapters Master style rerolls that could buff something like a Terminator unit. It's also a bit tougher than normal with Toughness 5, and gets a spell once per game from his little familiar. Though I must admit, for an 140 point character, I don't think his melee is particularly standout, and he's a bit more of a buffing piece than a damage dealer. Overall, I think he's okay though. I'd rate him a 7 out of 10, but certainly not auto include even for Red Corsairs. Finally, I thought we'd just take a brief spin through the various different Forge World choices that you can take. There are really quite a lot of Forge World data sheets for Chaos Space Marines, and I'm not going to go through all of them here. Maybe just a few of the more standout ones that you might be a bit more tempted to run in army lists. They do have a fair few super heavies and things that are just a fair bit overcosted. I'd say perhaps one of the most interesting is the Dreadclaw Drop Pod, 115 points for first turn chaos deployments. Quite nice for getting an alpha strike on the enemy with something ranged. Maybe Noise Marines or the Rubric Marines might be decent choices to pack into them. It is paying a bit of a premium for the privilege of doing that, but at least it can fly around and be a bit of a nuisance, unlike the Loyalist version. I'd rate it a 7 out of 10 overall. Next up, we've got the Leviathan Dreadnought, 220 points base. I think most of the combat and shooting weapons are usable, but perhaps the dual Grav Bombards might be the one that I'd go for at the moment. High strength and high AP with high damage against high saves. A 2 plus save keeps him relatively safe with Armour of Contempt, but he does lack the core keyword, unlike his brothers the Contemptors. He also does have that unfortunate Relic rule, which isn't very tempting in Nephilim for minus 1 CP, particularly as Chaos Space Marines have plenty of good pre-game upgrades with lots of good Warlord traits and Relics. I'd rate it a 6 out of 10 overall, probably on the higher side of that, pushing towards a 7. Next up, we've got the Chaos Decimator, 160 points for a 12 wound demon engine, or 180 of your upgrades to soul burner petards, probably the most interesting weapon. These give you 2d3 shots each, and for every wound roll of a 2 plus that you make, you deal 1 mortal wound to the target, typically netting you around about 5 mortal wounds at range at 24 inches, which is going to be fairly reliably annoying against just about anything that you're pointed at. Otherwise, it's got the demon engine's benefits and synergies. Things like the minus one damage stratagem, the invul, and the regeneration, though it isn't core for any buffs or things. Having a good amount of mortal wounds being spat out of this is really quite interesting, I think. Though still probably a little bit on the pricey side for the damage output that it brings. Maybe the mortal wounds might just be a bit of a feel-good and general purpose type choice, rather than being enormously efficient for the 180 points. I'd rate it a 7 out of 10 though, certainly usable. Moving on, we've got the Chaos Contempt of Dreadnought for 140 points base can be upgraded with the Bulkites and the Cyclone Missile Launcher for some fairly nice generalist range damage, and again can spit out a fair few mortal wounds on top of other stuff. I feel like this thing is probably a bit more interesting over the Decimator as it's a core choice, it can get buffs from various different sources, and the big high volume Bulkites are pretty efficient whether you point them against heavy tanks or light infantry. Again costing CP with a Relic Roar is a bit of a bomber though, it means that spamming these is kind of painful. I'd rate them a 7 out of 10 overall, maybe pushing towards an 8. The Terex Pattern Termite Drill is another way to get your marines into combat. In general, I think you'd normally want to drill up with this thing on turn 2, dispatch a shooting unit to try and gun down some enemies, and then maybe attempt a risky charge on some vehicle, where it's got some pretty threatening melee damage up close. It's fairly tough as well with a big toughness 8, but it comes with a fairly hefty price tag of 180 points. I feel like if you want a deep strike chaos threat, then it's probably worth paying for the Dreadclaw Drop Pod and getting them in turn 1 but I feel like this one will be quite a fun one to use with the big melee threat following it up. Overall, I'd rate it a 6 out of 10, maybe a bit more of a fun choice than one that's truly all that efficient. Lastly, for the Forge World choices that I thought I'd cover in this video, we've got the Greater Brass Scorpion. In general, I think the Games Workshop does tend to make their super heavy vehicles from Forge World overcosted, but the Brass Scorpion, I think, comes out of this quite lightly. If you compare it to things like Chaos Knights, it's actually really quite good. At 475 points, it's 100 cheaper than the Lord of Skulls, but does remain fairly comparable in a bunch of ways, losing out only in a few areas like having a worse save, and a bit of a trade-off in the range damage. I'd say it's probably in a fairly similar place to the Lord of Skulls overall. So there's enough range and melee damage, really great for any synergies that you can put on it, but has the downsides of being one concentrated super heavy vehicle, 
in that it could be screened, neutralised and doesn't get on well with terrain. I've rated it a 6 out of 10 overall here. So there we have it then, a bit of a tour through the various flavours of Chaos Space Marine units in 40k, and a quick appraisal as to the strongest and weakest points of them, and how good I'd rate them overall. If you think that I missed anything, or rated anything too high or too low, please by all means let me know down in the comments, always good to hear some alternate takes. If you've enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to Allspets Tactics, or I'll certainly keep the regular 40k videos coming. I've made similar videos like this for quite a lot of the other 40k factions, so feel free to give that a search if you'd like to see one that's similar for the army that you play. Otherwise, I would just like to quickly mention that Allspets Tactics has a Patreon page as well, and that's the thing that allows me to put quite so much big effort into making really long, in-depth videos like this, where we look over an entire faction in detail. If you do want to help keep this sort of content coming, feel free to check out the link below. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things come next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.